The CaterinRacer.com America's Road Trip is sponsored by DPR Motorsport, your competitive advantage. By design and display structures, immerse yourself in worlds beyond the bespoke projection screens. And by just add lightness, high performance LED lights and accessories for the Caterham 7. We're also supported by Darren Burke Performance Driver Coach and FP0 Simulators. So, crunch point and a crucial time in this, the fourth season of racing in the CaterinRacer.com Chronicles. This, of course, is once again the America's Road Trip where drivers are tackling some of the best virtual representations of uh, North and South America, and we are at the fourth of our final four, fourth of our four qualification races to, to, to determine the next three drivers that will get a guaranteed spot in the grand final in a couple of weeks' time at Mont Tremblant, and those that don't, ha and of course, try and avoid having to go through the dreaded last chance saloon race at Laguna Seca next week. This is going to be pretty crucial, and to do it, to decide it, what a place to, to actually come and try and decide those final three spots. It is Road America and Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. One, in, in my humble view and the view of many people one of if not in some cases the best road to road course in america has lots of sweeps and turns lots of fast corners and lots of key overtaking opportunities here which means it should be hopefully another fast frantic and enjoyable 25 minutes of racing scott woodwiss and chris Atchison once again in the commentary box and chris we were talking just before we went on air this really is a superb circuit for so many reasons and we talked about some key corners which there's going to be lots of passing opportunities on but ultimately, this is a circuit where it flows so nicely, and I think it really suits the Caterhams. We should hopefully lend to another good race that we, uh, to match the three that we've already had so far this season. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Another classic American track here. We've got a, an awful lot of long straightaways and lots and lots of overtaking positions. Uh, it's a track, again, that's maybe not so familiar to the European uh, audience. So I've brought along with us a map again, just so that we can quickly have a look at uh, sort of the layout for this evening. Uh, and you can see that there's, say, an awful lot of long <laughs> bits of tarmac there that uh, it's a conducive and going into sort of tight corners. So there's at least three really good overtaking opportunities. You've got the long straight going along the bottom of the screen here into turn one, and there's a good opportunity for citrine up the hill up there. Equally through um, four and down into the marine sweep at five, it's, uh, it's another really good opportunity. And we've got sort of several others, but probably the most crucial on the track is if we look at turn 11 at the top there called the kink. Um, if you get that absolutely nailed, you've got a perfect opportunity to overtake into Canada corner, corner 12 at the bottom of the, the, the hill there. So yeah, plenty of opportunities for drivers to overtake, plenty of opportunities for side-by-side -side moments and, and in our pre sort of season event that we had a practice event this this led to some absolutely brilliant racing so can't wait to see what the, the drivers are all going to get up to tonight yeah and there are plenty of them of course and we've had some great action as the season's got on this quick reminder of what we've had so far and where we've been because we started just three weeks ago at Watkins Glen for our first race then we headed to our only trip to South America with Interlagos the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache in Brazil the last time out we had a very exciting run at Road Atlanta the home of Petit Le Mans we're here of course at Road America for the final qualification race as we mentioned it is then WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca for that all important last chance saloon only for drivers that haven't qualified automatically from these first four qualification heats and then everyone that's qualified then battles it out to become the America's Road Trip Champion at the incredible Mont Tremblant circuit, a rather underrated circuit for all the wrong reasons because it is such a brilliant facility, such a wonderful flowing circuit deep in the heart of Canada and that's where the grand final will be in two weeks time. So, in terms of who we've got tonight, there are, it, it, there's first of all, quick look at who has already qualified this one. So, of course, it was, Blair, it was James Murphy, Christian Zarucci and Blair McConaughey who qualified from the first race at Botkins Glen. Then Jensen Hassler took the first of his two wins so far, because he has won the last two races on the bounce. Jensen Hassler ahead of Mark Bennett and Guy Crawford, who were the qualifiers from Interlagos. Then, the, then those who made it through from Road Atlanta were Paul Fernerhuff, Richard Gallagher and Chris Skillicorn. Now, five of those drivers on the screen are racing again tonight, which are Christian Zaruta, uh, Mark Bennett, uh, I'm going to get this right now if I get it right, so, uh, Mark Bennett, Paul Fernandez, Richard Gallagher, and Chris Skillicorn. You've missed Guy Crawford. Guy Crawford, right, so it's, it's Guy Crawford, 
uh, Paul Fernahuff and Chris Gilbert because Rich Gallagher's not here. Thank you for the reminder. So uh, that means that we've only got uh, three more places to secure automatically here. And then much like the last chance races at the Walter Hayes Trophy of 4 Ford Festival, it is only for drivers that haven't made it through at Laguna Seca. And it'll be just the final six places, which means we'll have a full 18 car grid that will head to Canada. So all to play for tonight. And there are, of course, those automatic qualified drivers that will be the... Um, sort of the catering cats amongst the non-qualified pigeons. I don't know where I was going with that, but it, it made sense in my head. Uh, anyway, but what I mean is that they're, once again, going to be potential catalysts uh, to those who are simply trying to get themselves an automatic spot. But, of course, we have to ignore them because those who are qualified don't gain another spot. It just goes down to the next car behind them who hasn't got through, who can then get that advantage. So it should be interesting because more and more cars have that automatic spot how they might affect those who are trying to simply claw their way through not having to race again to try and make the final yeah that's right it's um it, it will help everyone out with <laughs> trying to decide where the uh, first qualification spots or the top three qualification spots are going to go so we will remind you of Sharuta, bennett crawford fernioff and skillicorn so wherever you see those names we can ignore them as far as the qualification spots go Worth pointing out, we've got a couple of new names on tonight and also a couple of returning drivers to the A grid. So uh, currently showing on the screen here, Freddie Chiddix. He is uh, going to be race racing in the academy this year. So he is getting some uh, great pre-season practice in uh, before their first sort of events happening a little later in the year. So you're just losing the breaking point there a little bit. So commentator's curse or camera's curse coming out there. But nevertheless, we've got Freddie uh, turning laps as well as Alastair Gregg, uh, showing him here in his grey machine this evening. Um, he's come across from the PT Sports Car Series. He did very well there. I think he became third, and he is uh, an engineering student. Um, so he is in the motorsport trade and has been proving extremely quick. And as you can see at the moment, he is topping the qualifying times with the early time of 231.198. Uh, anything in the low 31s is a great lap time. Um, finally just the two returning drivers so Jim Earlham hasn't been on the A grid for a little while and he's had a great pre-qualifying session uh, yesterday and has made itself up onto this A grid so great to see Jim up here and also the return of Steve McMaster so he's a previous champion on our service so really someone not to be messed with again third place currently on the qualifying grid uh, he's fresh back from doing some endurance racing on iRacing he's been doing the 24 hours of Daytona and also the 12 hours of Bathurst so 25 minutes tonight, Scott's going to be uh, a walk in the park, I'd say. I think it'll go by much quicker than he'd expect, I think, in some cases, given the fact he's probably in a car that's just as quick on the track, but uh, not uh, as long as a race as he was uh, possibly anticipating. Uh, and he's doing quite well to get to jump back into the seat of his 420R in the livery that's akin to the Ken Miles 4 GT40 that ran at the morning in 1966. And he is certainly making the most of his comeback so far with third place. But intriguingly, He's currently on track uh, and both also in the standings behind the man in second place, which is the ever-improving John Lang. Now, he's, of course, made his debut with us uh, in this America's Road Trip season. There he is in the uh, almost purpley pink, uh, yellow and uh, sort of cyan blue uh, cage room. I was about to say he was second, but he's just been shuffled down to fifth, as I think he's possibly trying to line up for one final effort. So, in continually improving his pace uh, as he uh, with these sort of lappy drives, uh, and it's, as you say, Alistair Gregg, certainly announcing himself pretty uh, prominently with that prompt just in time provisionally at the moment but Andy Parker again we keep talking about him every single week he keeps on putting himself into contention and putting himself into a position where he can qualify but just luck hasn't been on his side the last couple of races has it Andy but particularly in lost Scott in the commentary box just briefly but yeah, as, as he was sort of alluding to Largely, and he can make it through uh, without too many mishaps or any problems. We've got Scott back in the commentary box. Yeah, but yeah, so it sounded like, Scott, you were just uh, saying that he's he, he's so close each time and, and, and it'd be really good to see Andrew actually compete now and, and try and keep it going. He was sort of 60% of the way through the race last time in a safe position and then, then kind of threw it away in, a, in, a, in what turned out to be a, a self-induced error. Yeah, uh, I didn't realise I disappeared, so a bit well, forgive me for that. But Andrew, Andy Parker certainly has been getting, as you say, improving all the time and just hoping that he can overcome any bad luck and that all the luck goes his way this time and he can maintain a spot in the top three positions. The highest placed driver currently at the moment with three and a bit minutes to go in this qualifying session who has already qualified is in fact Chris Gillicorn. He's only uh, a hundredth of a second away from Andy Parker's uh, time in second place and he's still just under a quarter of a second. And just showing how close it really is, 
top four are separated by a quarter of a second, with second, third and fourth only separated by a mere two hundredths of a second, if not even three. So that is pretty extraordinary to see how close it is on a lap, which it does reward smooth driving, particularly with all these long corners here. There are some big braking zones, but even the, 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 the slower corners here aren't right angles like you'd find on a street circuit. They're kind of still... Uh, so sort of slightly longer, more flowing corners and sort of big, big sort of stop start sort of back and forth on the accelerator on the brake. So it's intriguing how drivers are finding their flow here, particularly with some of the testing they'll have done during the week. And some drivers seem to be taking to it, Chris, quicker than others. Yeah, I think, again, a lot of these American tracks have sort of similar character. With gradients a big part of them. So we've seen all the, you know, the last few weeks and, and we'll carry on for the rest of the season. We're going to see some pretty extreme gradient. And that's great for car, for car handling, car dynamics, and just for the drivers being able to sort of show off their skill about how do you balance a car. Um, we'll see people taking uh, some liberties probably with track exits like they do there and again that's pretty normal for this track the, the, the exits are g generous but obviously the, the further out you go the longer you are making the track so as you see Tom Willis or is it Fowler sorry uh, making a slight mistake out of there going down underneath the bridge down here it's um yeah I, I think what I'd really like to see tonight is Parker uh, making a good bid for his his qualifying spot. I think he can prove he, well. He's in second place now. It's a great start. But equally, we've seen um, you know Lang and Arnell. They they're kind of on the the, the, the edges of being able to, to to break into that top thing. So I'd love to see them have a go. But it looks like um, uh, Alistair Gregg is is looking odds on for the moment, isn't he? Um, with McMaster, obviously, again showing that he really does have a mastery of these uh, these four twenties. And just further, looking further down the order, whilst we continue looking at our uh, cars towards the front of the field, Andy Park, second fastest, uh, Steve McMahon's the fourth, Paul Fernahaf has popped up to the fifth, so he's back on to some of the form we saw from him early on when he first started racing with us. Uh, but looking at some down, further down the order, notice that some, something which relates to what Christian Zaruta was saying in terms of, he mentioned, I think it was either the last race or the race before, the fact he was saying that you know, it's not the fact that he's gotten any slower as a driver, just everyone else is caught up in terms of their ability. So uh, someone who, I, in, in the past, you would have expected to be an automatic favourite for pole position. Not so now that everyone starts to catch up because he's now down in eighth place and he's, he's four and a half tenths off pole position. And it's not a bad lap at all. He's somewhat a quarter of a second ahead of James Fowler in ninth. So it's not as if he's sort of in no man's land towards the bottom of the top ten. But it's fascinating how much... So many drivers have improved compared to where they would have been a season or two ago, where they would have been either further down mid pack or towards the rear. It's the the, the, improve, the pace of improvement for some of the drivers in the field, Chris, is incredible, but also in some cases for some drivers also quite alarming, but in a rather good way. Yeah, definitely. They they can't just turn up now. So Christian can't just turn up now, expect to do a couple of laps and be on the pace. Really, all their drivers are extracting maximum from these tracks, and they're putting in the time and effort and, and turning laps on the servers uh, in, in practice session. We see Christian diving in there into the pits. We're down to the zero time left on the thing, so anyone that's on a lap now can complete it. We see Steve Arnell there put himself into second place in the last ditch lap. What a great finishing lap there. And Andrew Parker has actually moved up into the top of the of, uh, pole position there, which is, again, brilliant to do that on the last lap with all the pressure on it. So... Fast and Furious coming in with these final laps to see if they can improve. Now, Andy Parker, as you say, popping up to pole position, 19 thousandths of a second just ahead of Alistair Gregg. So this is arguably the best chance that Andy's had so far all yet, all day, not just win a race, but also get one of those cover to qualification spots at the same time. Uh, Alistair Gregg is just finishing off his last lap. We've still got lap times also for Mark Bennett, who is one of the five drivers that have already qualified. Freddie Chicks is currently in 15th place. Should also mention the comeback for Hudson Knight tonight. Of course, he couldn't do a last round as he had a, a bit of an, an injury to his foot, but he's managed to apparently come back to full health, and he's now uh, back on the grid in 16th as his father, Jason, who's been a regular in the PC Sports Car Series uh, in recent times, is back down in 11th spot, so he's got some work to do. And even so, the top 11 is still covered by less than a second on the timing screen. Mark Bennett comes across the line to be one of the last couple of cars to finish his lap. He pops up from 12th up into 9th place, into the top 10 for Mark Bennett. 2 minutes 31.608. Jim Merlin, the last car to finish his lap. Looks like possibly Alistair Gregg might be as well. But the time has not just hit zero, but the session has finished completely. So Alistair Gregg uh, runs out of time. And in fact, it will be Andrew Parker with, I think it might even be, if I'm wrong, it might be his first pole position, I think, because that was a superb effort to put himself 19,000 of a second, a minuscule margin ahead of newcomer Alistair Gregg, who himself was impressed 
on his first uh, evenings into the series with second quickest. Then Steve Arnell and Chris Skithercorn on the second row of the grid, followed by Steve McMaster with a welcome return to see him starting fifth. Paul Fernhardt is sixth. Then John Lang, Tom McEwing, Mark Bennett and Christian Zaruta a surprise down in tenth with some work to do to try and claw himself back up the order if he wants to secure a decent finish to keep up his momentum. 11th for James Fowler, 12th for Jason Knight, 13th for Tom Willis, who's no slouch himself either. Uh, Jim Erlen, 14th. It's good to have him back on an A grid for the first time in a while. Alan Curtis, 15th. Freddie Chiddix for his first race will be 16th on the grid. And then it is Hudson Knight. And it should be Guy Crawford at 18th. But it looks as though he hasn't set a time in qualifying. So either, either he's had issues and won't be able to start or simply just elected to start for the back of the grid to have some fun and pick his way through, Chris. Yeah, uh, what a what a great performance for the top three in our on our grid have and not yet qualified, so they've put themselves in great position. So Andy Park, Andrew Parker, Alistair Gregg, and Steve Arnell, all there, sort of not qualified yet. So if they can stick where they are now, then they will be in great position to get that. We've got Chris Gillicorn up next, a surprise qualifier last week, but looks like he's got carried that form over uh, as we start to join the grid. I think one thing will be key in this race, Chris, is that you have some drivers here who. For those who follow the series in the last three seasons that we've done, and particularly the first few races we've done here in this America's Road Tour, there are drivers which those who follow it know are quick, like Christian Zaruta, like Tom Willis, like Guy Crawford. What's going to be intriguing here is watching how, wherever they qualified, then uh, their transition then into what their race pace shows. Because we know that Christian's quick in the race. He's very consistent. He knows how to get take, make a good start, pick up a couple of places, and then slowly but surely pick his way through the cars in front to get towards the front. He does it in a way that isn't him barging or bullying his way through. He's very clean, very precise to how he makes moves, and therefore he's simply just silently making his way through without causing too much drama. And he also seems to be the one that picks up the pieces when other cars around him kind of have issues and get involved in fights. So watching him, but also other cars around, will be quite interesting to watch how those guys deep in the field, who should be further up the grid from, from past experience, how they make their way towards the front if they experience any challenges along the way from our established and new drivers also around them. Yeah, that's right. So we're, the racecraft is definitely going to show here. Um, this is not going to be one at the first corner. It's going to be halfway through the race before we even see a gap. Scott, here we go. The lights are up. So Andy Parker and Aston Greg on the front row of the grid will be getting up the first time winner and will we get three brand new qualifiers. We're certain to do so. Let's see if we can see who gets through here at Road America? Lights out and race four of the Road America's, uh, the America's Road Trip Race.com is underway. Everyone appears to have gone away cleanly, he says, rather nervously. But down towards turn one, they're already going four abreast in the mid pack, so they're certainly not going calm at, uh, at early doors here. But it's going to be Andy Parker who will turn in in the lead, diving up the inside for second after a strong start of Steve Arnell. But Greg holds the outside line and maintains the position. It's Skillicorn in fourth and McMaster in fifth position. Lang is sixth. And it's Bennett, McEwing, Fernand Huff and Tom Willis up to 10th, running up the top 10. As for Christian Zaruta, he started just outside the top 10, but he's down now in 12th position, as low as 13th. So he's already had a shaky start as they head now down uh, towards Turn 4 and up towards the Moraine Sweep and then Turn 5. As they now see side by side between 1st and 3rd, and they're banging wheels already. There's been contact already. That was Greg, I think, almost putting two words onto the grass, but certainly for a new boy, not afraid to get his elbows out as they turn into turn five. A little lock up there is now Parker with a flick of oversteer on the exit, and it's three wide behind them between Bennett, Tom McEwing, and John Lang in the middle. That's not going to work, and the one that lost out there was Tom McEwing getting squeezed onto the grass, but he managed to, to survive somehow. So a bit of bumping and boring at the front and the mid pack, Chris, but somehow, he says tentatively, they all seem to have got through relatively unscathed. <laughs> we haven't seen the last of it yet. There was some spinning at the back there. I did hear the cars sort of losing some traction. So there's definitely some issues for some of the rear, rear of the field there. But like you say, there was some bumping and boring, which could have ended a lot worse than it did. But nevertheless, we still see Parker out front with Alistair Gregg really on, uh, really on his tail. Um, and, and the rest of the grid sort of remains consistent. I uh, did see Christian dig that awful start. He got a lot of wheel spin, which actually sent him backwards through the field, which is why he's dropped down from his 10th place. But it does look like he will be starting to make his way up. He's already made from 13th to 12th. That is the kink. And you can see how on the edge it is as drivers drift out wide. And now Alistair Gregg's got the jump on Andy Parker because Andy just dropped his wheels over the edge of the grass and, and caused himself a slowdown. What won't help him here? He's now got Steve Arnell to his outside to head into Canada Corner. And this is a key breaking zone here. If he hit it too late, he'll be skating off, not just off the runoff area, but also potentially into the tyres or into the gravel trap. And it's so easy to lock up or get distracted from watching the car in front. You just simply miss your breaking point and go skating off down the escape road. 
So up towards the end of lap one through turn 14 and now the first long climb up the hill towards the pit straight and now across the start finish line to end the first lap and it will be newcomer Alistair Gregg. Welcome to CajunRacer.com. He's certainly introducing himself in quite fine fashion as he heads over the crest under the bridge and to end lap one in the lead. It's Parker in second place. Chris Gillicorn is third but he's under attack now from Steve Arnell. Likewise we're seeing Mark Bennett attacking Steve McMaster so it's side by side for third and fifth positions. See about making a massive dive here, trying to make it past Skillicorn, who in turn is trying to find a way through on Andy Parker to, 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 and to distract him enough to force a mistake and to make it an easy picking. This is not going to happen, and what is happening for Paul Fernhoff is he's lost it completely at turn one. It looks as though he wasn't pushed, he jumped by himself, but not quite the fortunes that Paul wanted. He's tumbled down to 16th with lots of work to do, and still a long way to go, but several seconds back, and not quite any chance, I think, of getting an automatic qualifying spot if he wants it. Yeah, obviously Arnell, Arnell again now up alongside Skillicorn. Remember, Skillicorn's already qualified, so he doesn't count. So Arnell's still in a safe place. We saw Arnell have a really good dive up the inside of turn one, but it kind of compromised him in the end because he had to t keep a tight line to sort of not run into anyone. Uh, and so he actually ended up losing out overall. So maybe it would have been better for him to move back in line at that point. But nevertheless, Alistair's not getting away at the front and Andrew is absolutely hounding him going round into this second lap now um, as, as <laughs> it doesn't... Maybe he thought he was going to get away from, from Andrew, but actually he's uh, absolutely not the case right now. And as you can see, we're bunching up still. We've told you this thing wasn't going to spread out. And it certainly looks, though, it's going to be quite entertaining if they do keep this close all the way through the remaining 21 minutes or so. And we should remind you that Andy Park has been getting quicker and quicker with all the tuition he's had from one of our uh, generous supporters, which has been, of course, Darren Burke, performance driver coach. He's been working with Andy uh, in between seasons to getting quicker and with every single race he seems to find a little bit more pace a little bit more speed a little bit more confidence in the car and the setup that he's got underneath him to keep on pushing hard it's been evident so far with the pole position he took he's keeping as the as on as he can he's much skill to in third place and that is Steve McMaster trying to go the long way around John Lang by putting four wheels onto the grass and almost losing the back end luckily he got it back onto the tarmac has managed to get it anchored up so he can remain in seventh position, or he's because of the expense of John Lang, who's now ahead into sixth place. Rest of the top ten behind him is Tom McEwing in eighth, Tom Willis in ninth, and James Fowler. And that's for Christian Zaruta and Guy Crawford. Well, Zaruta's still in twelfth, and not really able to make any more progress past Jason Knight. Whilst uh, Guy Crawford, who started at the back of the grid after he didn't set the time in qualifying, I suspect possibly on purpose to give himself a challenge, uh, is now in 13th place uh, up to the back. So he's up five spots from where he originally started, but still plenty of way to go. That's the Greg test the fastest lap of the race. Not bad for a dear boy, is it? No, that's a great time as well. So anything in the 31s, but especially when you get to get down the low 31s, we go three wide into turn one. Uh, Steve McMaster there putting it down the inside of John Lang. He came onto that straight in third on that in that battle. So you can see how that straight really does allow you to... As there's still three wide coming into the third and fourth turns. Um, what a brilliant battle. So McMaster there wins out that battle with Bennett slipping out into second place in that battle and, and John Lang sort of sitting there in third. But... But equally, we've got McEwen there ready to pick up the pieces. And it looks like uh, even at heads, Chris Skillicon is ready to fight back against Steve Arnell, who had made that place up going into turn one. We have lost Scott temporarily in the commentary box. I think I can see him back, back in now. Yep, hi, yeah. Scott. Yeah, back, back in now. I think you cut out of my stream, so I had to quickly jump back out back in again. So, um, look at the this battle so far the big battle appears to be not just this scrap we're watching here for third place between Steve Arnell and Chris Gillicorn but now this incredible was turning to a five almost six car just absolute uh, you know slugfest between these cars here headed by, headed by Steve McMaster who I suspect is now going to try and run away here to catch the cars in front he's leaving Mark Bennett to deal with John Lang but also in there is Tom, Tom Willis Tom McEwing is a brand new driver for the academy this year and whilst Tom Willis has been there, done that and got the t-shirt where he's won both his academy group and also road sport and while he's taking a bit of a sabbatical from racing I'm sure when he does come back he'll be quite well practiced and and not so race rusty as he might think with sim race doing he's certainly doing this to uh, fill the void in they almost went three abreast into the kink and I probably would have had heart palpitations if I saw that happen because that was probably never going to work and they're all kicking up the, uh, the dust in front now meanwhile Chris Skillicorn managed to get a run on Steve Arnell and he's asked him for third place and what's also crucial is these two haven't allowed both Gregor Parker to get away and I suspect Chris it's because these two are so close to each other possibly trading 
you know, faster, faster set times, that it, it, it's starting to inadvertently hold them up a little bit. As Skinner Corner holds on to third, and running wide there for both is not going to help them either with the cars around them trying to pull away in terms of Greg. And, catch up to them and keep with them in terms of Steve Arnell. Yeah, remember, Skillicon's already qualified, so he is, he's only acting as interference here. So Arnell, I'm sure, would be pretty happy to see him either make a move up the hill or, or, or sit behind him. But they're, they're still having a great fun battle. Uh, I hope it doesn't end in tears. Uh, we've seen uh, Mark Bennett slip back. I think he had a mistake down at... Uh, Canada corner whether he was helped into that mistake I'm not sure as Arnell does slip in front of Skillicorn again ready to see whether they can catch up to this lead too if they do they've got a good chance of actually winning this race so whether, whether it, uh, they can latch onto the lead too who are now nose the tail heading from turn three and onto the back straight through the very flat out almost non corner of four underneath the, the bridge and down the Moraine Street towards five this is the chance Andy Parker here to regain the lead from Alistair Gregg. It might be his first time racing with us, but he's no stranger to these cars having raced them in the PT Sports Car Championship. And the two are going to go side by side on their braking zone towards five. Who breaks later? It's going to be fairly equal, in fact. And just behind, Skillicorn is making himself a little bit of a nuisance here. At least probably maybe not intentionally. And uh, we spoke to you sincerely about Andy Parker, didn't we? Round he goes on the exit at turn five. And unfortunately, like he did at Road, America, at Road Atlantic, Chris, it's kind of... they probably non-intentionally all gone to pieces for him he's still got a chance to get through he's getting a lot of luck particularly with these three battling amongst each other he's now found himself slotted right into the scrap between uh, what is now currently 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th with Met Burnett trying to get back through he's trying to go three abreast down towards the um, turn 8 at the end of the hurry downs and whether that's going to work or not he has to back out of it and run wide but that spin once again just the bad luck for Andy Parker just a little bit too keen on the accelerator didn't work out for him and now because of that He's found himself in a position that he really doesn't what doesn't want to be and can't afford to be in either. Out of the frying pan into the fire, isn't it really? This is uh, unbelievable amounts of pressure now he's under. Um, I have to say, you know, you can't blame someone for wanting to go and compete for the win though, can you? It's, it's good to see that he is pushing and he was hoping to get beyond 60% of the race this time before spinning, but actually it looks like he was just under halfway. So it's still absolutely intense battles. You can see how many, how much this toe is I can't believe this is going to work out, Scott. It didn't work out. We had a bit of contact there in the middle of the pack. It was, un, un, well, un, not unexpected, shall we say. I think Andy Parker was a little bit of an innocent party in that. It looks like John Lang was caught up in it and there was a big shuffle around. Whilst that was happening, just in front, I noticed that Chris Skillicorn has taken, as you can see, second place from Chris Skillicorn. So Mars has taken it from Skillicorn. And now Steve Arnell's in the toe as well. And look at them, all three together up the hill as Skillicorn moves out. Now again to stress, Skillicorn has already qualified, so regardless if he passes McMaster or not, he, he won't deny McMaster a qualifying spot any less than it uh, will for Steve Arnell, because they stay as they are. We know with three qualifiers, it will be that man in the foreground, Anston Gregg, then of course Steve Arnell and Steve McMaster. But what role Skillicorn plays here as the cat amongst the pigeons is certainly playing out quite evidently in front of us. So Skillicorn's now up to second place. It's now McMaster's turn to go to the inside of Steve Arnell towards turn four. But Arnell outbreaks him. McMaster slots back in and feels discretion. It is the better part of the battle on this occasion. And he now looks for another opportunity, which might come as he's not only in the slipstream of, of Skillicorn, but Chris also has to deal with the fact he's got Arnell to his right. And now with the, the uh, light blue and red car of Steve McMaster right in the toe, both of them switching one side to the other to keep the toe going. He's trying to sneak up the inside of Skillicorn, but he had the door shut. This is going to be crucial here. Either these three cars have got to decide to try and work together a bit better, which is not going to work out. Bennett, meanwhile, is just nibbling away at the back of Tom Willis's car. And we see now that uh, that's James Fowler under threat from Christian Zaruta and Guy Crawford, who incredibly have picked, way, picked their way up, Chris, into the top ten. Guy Crawford now ninth and Christian Zaruta tenth. That's for Andy Parker, meanwhile, down to twelfth. His chances of getting an automatic spot once again seem to be fading pretty quickly. Yeah, this, they, I mean, <laughs> Christian Sarita is literally faced with a wall of cars. There's no other way of just going. I mean, I think he makes a dive down there. That's a very tight move. Did send some cars toppling there. I think that was a bit of ambition over, and Guy Crawford actually came off worse. He got sort of spun out wide there. So I, I think that was a bit of a desperation move. But nevertheless, he has made his way up, um, whether by foul or fair. Bit hung out now at the carousel. So yeah, it's action wherever we look here. And remembering, yep, Skillicorn has qualified. So Arnell and Greg out front, as well as McMaster behind here, are all safe. Uh, for their qualifying spaces. They've got a bit of a gap there. Back to McEwing, and who would have thought that he'd be up in fifth place by now? 
Yeah, impressive stuff for the 2021 racer. Of course, again, still learning. I, I like to think he's learning quite a bit of race car after, or as much race car as he can in these virtual situations. So when he does get into his real race car for his first circuit race, he'll certainly be as, as prepared as he can be for all the race that he's done with us here at cateringracer.com. So we've just gone past the halfway point there. It's a 25-minute race. 12 and a half minutes, it's just about elapsed. Just under 12 and a half to go now. And now this scrap going off a second, third, and fourth. It's Steve Arnell who hasn't qualified. Skinnercorn who has. McMaster who hasn't. So the third few qualifiers are going to be runaway race winner on his debut in the, in the series. Alistair Gray, Steve Arnell, and McMa Steve McMaster. Here comes Skinnercorn to make a move for second place. And even though he'll be ignored in the results in terms of qualification spots, second place is still strong for him. And he's having one of his stronger evenings so far, regardless of the fact that we have some of the uh, arguably faster drivers out there who have already qualified and are choosing not to race tonight. But holding his own against someone like Steve McMaster, which is known no mean feat in itself, in being a one of our two champions that we had early on. We had the 420R and the Academy Championship separately, and McMaster was one of the champions there. And now as they go side by side again, let's see if I now has got the... Got the guts to try and make an outside move here, make a dive in the braking zone. They're still pretty wide, and looks though, I think, it's going to cause the side of the slot back in behind Arnell. who had quite a run on him, and that breaks him and clips the back of Arnell, and round he goes. Now, I think Skillicorn might possibly think he's going to wait. He's, yeah, he's been quite, um, I think, gratuitous is there and waiting for Arnell to get back on the circuit. And he arrives on just in front of Handy Fowler, and uh, uh, of James Fowler. It gives him a bit of a hip and shoulder there, saying, Do you mind just looking you, where you go next time you come back on the circuit? So that was quite a dramatic sequence there. It looked all sort of calm and friendly, and all of a sudden, Skillicorn just missed his breaking point, and power just kicked off straight away. I was about to say, Scott, Arnell is playing with fire. It's uh, any time you come, he's obviously the great manoeuvres, and there was some really great racing. But every every corner, you're you're reliant on someone not making a mistake, and and it's very easy to do that. And that's what we saw. And so we have got McEwing now has taken one of those qualifying spots. So we've got Alistair Gregg. Steve McMaster and Tom McEwing all now in the qualifying spots um, ready for, yeah, and, and McEwing, I'm not sure where he started on the grid, but it certainly wasn't in third. No, I think he was quite deep in the mid-pack, so he had some work to do to work it to, to work his way through, but the fact he managed to keep his nose clean whilst others were bumping and boring and, and banging wheels certainly means a lot, particularly when you would have to get yourself into a prime position to hold on. Um, I should mention that Andy Parker was at one point as low as 13th after he had that spin up at turn five. And he's now got back up to 10th and he's now batting away uh, with John Lang and Tom Willis. They think they're just coming out of the corner, but we stay on board with Steve Arnell, who is fourth place and what now out of a qualification spot when at one point he had it relatively comfortable. Turns his way out of the right hand of the final turn. Chris Skillicorn behind now has James Fowler for company. Then there's a gap back to Mark Bennett in seventh. Tom Willis is leading that next group of cars with John Lang and Andy Parker, James Knights. So Jason Knight's in there as well. So I think also is Christian Zaruta and Alan Curtis. So they come across the line. As Scott fades out from the commentary box just briefly there again. I'm just going to... Uh, we've got nine minutes of this race left now and Arnell is out there in a kind of gap on his own and I guess the story of the rest of this race is going to be can he catch back up with McEwing can he make his way back up to that gap uh, and and pass and into that qualifying spot I, I think it was uh, it was a mistake by Chris Skillicon it was as I know it was an innocent party in that accident so I think it would be good to see whether he could get back up there and then whether he's got enough time to get past McEwing um, yeah in the in the remaining time we've got Scott, are you back with us yet? Definitely a few technical issues going on with Scott's uh, connection this evening, so apologies for that, everybody. But as you can see, the racing is absolutely rapid, um, and we'll um, hopefully get Scott back with us uh, very shortly. Yeah, so the pack in the midfield is still not settled down. You can see that they're still uh, sort of angry vipers, all waspish, waspishly going around each other. And we can see Bennett here leading this pack, but one thing we do know is whenever we come back to them they're they're in a different order are you back with us scott okay we should continue out um alistair Gregg here has made himself now with all the shenanigans we've seen further down the field we've seen alistair Gregg um pulling out a seven second lead so as ever 
not getting a lot of attention on the stream because he's uh, just making it look easy. So he's joined the A grid and immediately pulled out to a, to a fantastic position. And But for a mistake, I think he's got this settled um, with seven minutes to go. Steve McMaster on his return to the, the, the A grid and after his sort of forays away, showing that he's still not lost any of his his uh, passion with this 420 and the skill uh, and is back ready to sort of take his qualifying position at the first chance. And we saw Andy Parkers, he's tried four times now and, and failed. So Steve, it's a bit galling to see McMaster just join the, uh, join the grid and, and manage to pull away into a qualifying spot. And again, that's looking now fairly comfortable with uh, the race settling down as, as we come to its sort of closing uh, conclusions. Mikuing, what a great move up through the, through the field. Tay currently in the third and final qualifying spot, but whether he's going to be able to keep that going uh, until the end of the race, well, I guess that's what we're going to see. The story is developing. You can see that Arnell is closing him down. He's just outside that second. As soon as he can get within that half second margin, he's going to start getting a toe as well. He's proved that he's got the pace. He put it up there third place on our, on our grid this evening. So hopefully he can actually uh, come away and, and, and see whether he can at least compete for that qualifying position. I think... I, along with a lot of uh, our viewers, would probably hope that that does happen. Uh, and, but, and behind, yep, the, the battles continue with Bennett here leading Lang. Lang was looking promising, wasn't he, early doors with uh, inside those qualifying places, but has faded into the pack. He got sort of shuffled backwards by some of these drivers. You see Tom Willis there. Again, he's made his way up through the field from what I think was around the top of 10, 12 uh, on qualifying, but he's now made his way all the way up to seventh place as he just denies Lang as breaking a bit late there, a little bit of lock-up going into this, this bottom corner here. Um, yeah, and then we've got the uh, Fowler and the first of the night. So Jason Knight actually having a, a better evening than Hudson this evening. So Hudson is down in 14th, but Jason up here flying high in 10th. Another sort of solid and strong position. Last time out, he actually had slipped onto the B grid. So a really good return to form uh, for, for Jason tonight. Um, Sharuta hasn't made um, progress like we might normally expect to see. He's still only down in 11th, so he's obviously been twos and fro's. And we saw that desperate dive bomb into the into the corner, and it looks like he's lost possession since. So who knows? Maybe people have taken their revenge on him. As we go around the ever lot, you know, it's, it's forever goes on this carousel corner. It, always as a driver want to get on the power but you you constantly slip backwards you, every time you do get on the power the car just sort of understeers offline uh, through the daunting kink as Christian's absolutely on the edge of adhesion there but you really do need to maximize that corner as you come down this back straight one of the most important overtaking positions as we, as he's sort of chasing down at night and, and, and just ahead of him you can see that pile of cars still um, representing this midfield Looking back at Steve Arnell, actually, uh, he's, he has caught up. He's now within that half second margin. So we, uh, and coming up with his back straight, he's got an absolutely great opportunity now with McEwing. He's been getting bigger and bigger in his mirrors and you can be sure that McEwing's feeling that pressure as we come on to these uh, last four minutes to go. So still at least uh, two or three more laps to go. Um, so Steve Arnell's got plenty of opportunities, maybe three opportunities per lap. So still lots of opportunity for him to make that uh, position up um we've no scott update so far he, he seems to have completely disappeared from me at the moment so you'll have to uh, accept my dulcet tones for uh, the rest of this race it looks like um really now putting the pressure on you can see the car the nose diving under braking as we're coming down this again looking that he's well within that half second lap and and you can see that the, the toe will really start kicking in you can see here the car gathering momentum as he pulls to the rear McEwen goes defensive to the inside and is that going to pay off we've seen here the mistake before and McEwen actually has to give that place up broke um with Ness and Ness Arnell's drifted off wide and he's going to be heading to the the brand so just as we thought that Arnell might have made that move sticky turns out that McEwing was right on the money with his breaking point and Arnell was just a bit too ambitious at that point sending him off wide and now he's got to do it all again and it's taken him the best part of five minutes to close that gap this time uh, and we've only got three minutes left so unless there's now a mistake from McEwing that may have been Arnell's one chance that, that unfortunately blew it uh, he's also got the attentions as Chris Skillicon behind him and you remember what happened when Skill God came up behind him previously.
though with three minutes left, it still doesn't look like this midfield pack are ever going to be. John Lang is being absolutely hung out to dry three wide round the carousel. And still they're fighting wheel to wheel. And, and John does drift off a bit wide. But it's almost unnatural that you can fit three cars through there. Uh, and John looks like he's going to drop another position as, as Tom's got the inside line with Fowler right on his tail as well. There's, as soon as you go out wide, as soon as you lose a bit of grip, as soon as you... Uh, have to come out of the throttle even a little bit the whole swarm is past you and you can see that Jason Knight has now closed in on this battle as well and he's looking to add a six car in Mark Bennett there getting a little bit of a nudge and contact and unfortunately that spin snark the unfortunate Mark Bennett now out into the barriers he is safely qualified though so whilst I'm sure he's a bit upset about being sent into the barriers he knows that that's not a crucial point of this season he will join us in the grand final it's worth saying that, yes, we have uh, one more opportunity for people to gain. So after the end of this race, we've got one more round next week where people who have not qualified do get a chance to uh, gain a qualification spot. In fact, there are six spots and that race isn't available and open to anyone else on our... Uh, anyone who's qualified is not, is not eligible to enter that race. So next week we will see the, the fight for those final six bases and it will be the top six who gain those places. As you see, John... Again, just hanging in there behind Fowler with Knight ever, ever getting closer. Again, the dust flies in the background as people are exploring the absolute limits of this track. Coming down to just a minute and a half left. And I've seen that Scott has joined us back in the commentary box. I'm hoping he can hear us. I haven't heard him yet. But there's a good chance now I can see him there again. Yep, with just that minute to go. Um, again absolute masterclass that we've seen from uh, Alistair Gregg he's joined us first time out on the A grid immediately struck dominance thrown the gauntlet down and, and whilst we haven't got that whole field of drivers so we haven't got uh, uh, James Murphy on the field tonight for example uh, and we haven't got uh, Jensen Hassel who's been the previous to the winner of the previous two events we have got uh, Alistair Gregg imposing himself as another uh, sort of contender for that grand final as he goes around that endless carousel uh, Steve McMaster, seven, seven and a half um, seconds behind. A, a, say a great return to the A grid. He had to do a bit of fighting to get through to the second place, but he has remained consistent where others have had their issues. Tom McEwing, great move up through the field. And you can see he is still ahead of Arnell. Um, we've got 18 seconds of slap, so it depends whether um, Alice is going to cross the line uh, before that 10 seconds is up. I don't think he will. So this, I think, will be Arnell's last shot going down into Canada corner. And real, realistically, he has got too much to do. So Arnell will have to go into that last chance qualifier uh, and hope for the best that he takes one of those six places. You can see we are now on that final lap. And in fact, we're on the final corner of the final lap with Alistair Gregg here taking that. As we head off up the hill, an impressive hill here going um, through up the, the start finish straight. A really dominant performance on his first night with us. Uh, what a great win for Alistair. Great stuff. So it is Alistair Gregg then with victory, who takes his first attempt, a fantastic effort to put himself seven seconds ahead of Steve McMaster, who not bad for a quick comeback for him in second place. And Tom McEwing will only just hold off Steve Arnell for the final qualification spot in third with Varnell having to go to the last chance race uh, next week. Chris Skillicall's already qualified. Tom Willis will have to have to secure his spots as well. There's a great side-by-side -side battle across the line between Christian Zarif and Andy Parker. Hudson Knight also rounding off the top 10 from Alan Curtis. And then Guy Crawford and the rest of the field comes through. Um, I'll say my apologies now. For some reason, my internet decided to do just a complete reset at the one moment. I didn't need it to do it. So, uh, unfortunately, I missed the last six minutes. But thank you to Chris for, for, for filling in where he did. I can always trust Chris to... Uh, fill in whenever I have a, a, a internet hiccup as so he did rather well up until the finish there and, I, and uh, I was allowing him to continue talking until he got to the finish I was anticipating him to, to call as the Greg across the line but uh, he was very gracious enough to hand to myself when he spotted that I was in, I was I was uh, I was back in so um, what uh, well well done for holding down the fort for the last six minutes whilst I was trying to <laughs> frankly get back in Chris and um here indeed is the result of that race. The last couple of cars just finishing off. But it has to Greg then. What a way to announce yourself at CatronRacer.com with a victory on his first night in, in in the series 
and he wins by quite a margin, seven seconds to Steve McMaster in second place, ever the fast driver in these cars. And Tom McEwen will be absolutely delighted with an unexpected but thoroughly deserved third place after he kept his nose clean whilst everyone else got theirs a little bit dirty and uh, dirty and bloodied. Fourth for Steve Arnell. He's the first of the cars that will have to go through to the last chance qualify next week at the Gunasaka. Chris Sherlockon doesn't have to worry about that. He's the five, highest cut. Highest finisher who already has qualified in sixth. Uh, Tom Willis actually came through from fairly deep in the field to finish up in sixth position. Jason Knight gets a strong top ten in seventh place. Christian Zaruta just beats Polman Andy Parker, who agonisingly again has bad luck that forces him down to ninth. And then it's uh, Hudson Knight making it to both of the Knight family members in the top ten. Hudson tenth with, of course, Jason a few places up in its seventh place. Alan Curtis eleventh from Di Crawford in twelfth, who was much higher up the, the field at one stage, but roughly eighth or ninth. But then certain instance for him have pushed him back down to finishing twelfth, but he's already qualified, as has also uh, Paul Ferdinand. And then we had some... Uh, finishes towards the, the bottom of some cars. It looks like they hit Strife in the closing stages. James Fowler, Mark Bennett, John uh, John Lang, and then two drivers we didn't really see too much of in the race, which is Freddie Chiddix, who managed to make it to the end in his first race with us in CajunRacer.com in 17th, and Jim Earlham on his first A-group appearance in a while. He rounded off the finishers. 18 cars started, and all 18 appeared to finish. So, um, on the basis that I didn't see the last few laps until the last lap, Chris, I guess there was some more frantic battling whilst I was trying to frantically get back in. Uh, there was quite a bit of action that saw a few drivers that were in amongst the top 10 while I last saw it shuffled quite down the order. Yeah, we saw um, Arnell did make it back to McEwing and he had his one stab at a position change, but unfortunately missed his breaking point. So he drifted off wide into the gravel and therefore lost his opportunity. It did look he had plenty of chance to get that done. I think it was a little bit of... Uh, uh, sort of an unfortunate missed breaking point there for him uh, into the same corner that actually got punted off um, earlier in the race. So he will come back to the last chance saloon um, as as will, uh, you know, the other drivers, Parker, um, again, <laughs> like we keep saying, it's a, such a shame, but he, he will make it, I'm sure, one day. But he's just got to avoid those spins and, and say whether it's good or bad it, it, sometimes it's nice to be taken out by someone and have someone to blame but the last two events it has been uh, of his own making we will have some time to uh, so i guess to ruminate although probably not too much because he'll have to recompose himself and get ready for what will be i'm sure possibly the most uh the, the most the most critical cage race the lock race he's ever done which is knowing the pace that he has and he has had throughout the series he really needs a good result in this last Race, uh, race, and given the pace that he's shown, particularly the last couple of weekends, uh, even tonight with the pole position and up there in the lead battle before his mishap at turn five, it proves that ultimately, unless we're looking at anyone else that wants to jump in at the last minute, uh, I would, I would really couldn't argue against anyone else but Parker being arguably a favourite for that last chance of the race if he competes. He's got to be, and it's, uh, you know, it's top six as well, so there's double the opportunity. If he doesn't finish in that top six, he's going to have to take a long, hard look at himself, isn't he? Because he really should be dominating that race next week. Not to put the pressure on, of course. <laughs> I think I think Darren Burt's going to be slave driving him in the sim, I think, a little bit, in terms of forcing him to put some extra laps in for the fact he made some mishaps as punishment. But uh, even so, uh, he will come back again next week. Uh, a couple of drivers that don't need to, that I can see are in chat, so I hope we can pick them up in there as uh, Chris has a chat to them are uh, at least our top two because I can't see Tom McEwing in the chat but I can see uh, our second place man of course who was uh, Steve McMaster but of course our winner who's with us now for a first time Chris is going to have a chat to our first time winner on his first time out Alistair Gregg so uh, how yeah. about that Alistair have you got us in the commentary box uh, I can hear you yes ah, brilliant so you've come across to our service you've done one uh, sort of practice race with us and you come along and you go and win our A grid that must feel pretty good uh, it, it's nice to get back into some proper racing. Uh, I did the PT uh, series uh, last winter, I think it was. I haven't done anything since, so it was nice to get back and like get back onto the pace I was before. Well, certainly, it looks like all the cobwebs have been sh fully shaken off, so you've gained your qualifying spot. And obviously, we haven't got the full grid of drivers on tonight. Some people taking this opportunity to have a little bit of a, a rest and a recoup, but you must be pretty confident with a dominant seven-second win there going into that sort of final series of races. Uh, I don't want to sound too cocky, but 
it, it was okay. We'll see what track it is for the, the grand final, whatever. Uh, it might not suit me. It might do. We'll find out. Excuses coming out, gauntlet laid down and all that. <laughs> well done for, uh, for, for your win tonight. And we look forward to seeing you in the grand final in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Yep, and we will also see if we can get Steve McMaster. Have you got us in the commentary box? Oh, yes, I have. How are you uh, doing? It's been a long time. You've been in, uh, enjoying your endurance racing online for a bit. Uh, 25 minutes must feel like a, a walk in the park. You say enduring, uh, enjoying, more enduring. Uh, <laughs> the endurance, it's, it's, it's painful. But, oh, listen, this is fantastic to be back. Um, really enjoyed that. Such a shame, the, the contact with... Um, Oh, uh, with Steve and I've forgotten who else it was. Um, I think it's Chris Gillicorn. Chris, yeah, it's such a shame because that was that was turning up to be something of a, a proper ding dong through to the end. But um, yeah, love and being back. And um, ah, listen, it's it's good to come back and get a P two. Alistair was just unbelievable today. So yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll let him have that. We'll let him have that one, and then uh, yeah, say so it's it's gearing up as 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 we always know it would be to a great grand final. It's good to see you back on the service, and we look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks for more. Cheers, chaps. Take care. Thanks for uh, thanks for all you do. Nice one. Okay, I have seen Tom join back into the uh, voice chat. I'm going to drag him in. He has got he's on mute at the moment. Um, Tom, you're on mute at the moment. But I don't know if you've got us in the commentary box can't hear you at the moment Tom I can see your light flashing but unfortunately I can't hear your voice I am going to have to just interpret the green flashes there uh, unfortunately we can't, can't can't get Tom but I'm going to interpret it in him he's saying what a great race coming through from deep in the field uh, unexpected and uh, and really really happy to have a qualifying position how's that Scott uh, sounds about what a person who got the final qualifying spot from deep in the field would say I think so yeah sounds about right <laughs> uh, sorry, Tom, that we couldn't get you. We'll we'll try and get you next time. But anyway, we'll see you in two weeks for that uh, grand final uh, as you join in as the latest qualifier. Um, and Scott, I guess you know we are now down to that uh, that last chance saloon. So we're going to see a lot of the drivers that qualified aren't eligible. All the drivers that qualified today have aren't eligible for that. So it's going to be that mid pack that we saw today fighting, squabbling, clawing at each other. That is going to be the battle for these qualifying positions. And I can't wait. Yeah, that's going to be quite frantic. And of course, what a circuit to do it, of course. Lag uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca in Monterey, California, which has been the home of uh, several, you know, sort of IMSA races in the past as well. We've seen plenty, plenty, plenty of frantic IndyCar races. And I know at even one point, Cajun wanted to uh, put on a, a special uh, Cajun Laguna Seca challenge at one stage. We're sending some cars over at the end of the season. But sadly, that didn't quite come to fruition. But uh, it would have been great to see some of them racing around in real life. But those who maybe would have gone, He's got the chance to experience what Laguna Seca, one of the best circuits in the US, is like in a virtual version. And of course, all those caterers pouring down through the corkscrew, either that's the stuff of dreams, the stuff of nightmares. Which one's it going to be? Either you choose or we'll see you next week. <laughs> so this is how it stands then. Four qualification races done. We've still got six more spots to decide. They will all be decided in that last chance race. And then, of course, the week after that, 23rd of March, same time as it always is at 8.30, it's going to be the grand final at Mont Tremblant, of course. And we'll see really all 18 drivers are going to be and of course ultimately he will come away with the title it's going to be quite an exciting way uh, to decide who wins but of course we've still got to decide the last few spots and that will happen next week and uh, of course we couldn't go racing at all without our fantastic partners who will sign off by thanking because they always do a magnificent job because once again the caterinracer.com america's road trip is sponsored by dpr motorsport your competitive advantage by display, design and display structures, immerse yourself in worlds beyond with bespoke projection screens, and just add lightness, high-performance LED lights and accessories for the Caterham 7. We're also supported by Darren Burke, performance driver coach, and by FP0 Simulators. Please do go and give them your custom if you can, and go and check them all out uh, around the web and on the social media channels, because they all do a brilliant job, and they're all wonderful supporters of CaterhamRace.com, without them of which uh, would make it, I think, a lot more difficult for Chris to be able to make this happen but at the same time all the support is very much uh very much welcomed and very much appreciated so once again for myself scott woodwiss and chris hutchinson thank you for watching of course do remember to uh if you're watching on uh, facebook or on youtube give the stream a like and also if you want to keep up to date on facebook just hit the the follow button on the caseproach.com page and you can get notifications of when we go live on there same on youtube you can hit the bell icon and hit all notifications so that when we get the next live broadcasts both for this series and any future ones 
you'll get them come up in your uh, subs in notifications inbox when we go live as well. And of course, do be sure to visit the website cajunracer.com. And if you want to get involved, of course, you can always get in touch. You can head over, of course, to dedicated Discord server as well, where you can take part in your virtual odds test to for your test your competency. I want you ready to race. Maybe you could be on an agri in one of these broadcasts in the future. But that's then. This is now. We'll see you next week for more action with a crucial last chance the race happens at the Gunsaker. Who will be the final six qualifiers? Join us then to find out. But until then, take care, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye-bye.